This program is brought to you by the Reeves Law Firm, www.reevesfirm.com. Good evening, everyone. In the know. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Tony Reeves. Fire. Following the news in any way, shape, or form. No shortage of things to talk about. What does it mean? What will it bring? Is this a reality we simply have to accept? Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to Q&A, Social Security Disability Today. Today we're going to talk about something that I know that people have been asking me about. is What happens if you have two cases? One in federal court and another new application. Well, sit back and relax because this is going to be a little confusing, but I'm going to try to make it as clear as I possibly can. Let me make one point abundantly clear. This video is not going to cover every scenario, but I'm just going to give you one example. So sit back and relax and be prepared to be confused. If you got questions, please let me know. So you filed an application January 1 of 2012. You were denied twice, went before a judge, and you were denied by the judge on January 1, 2014. You appealed the judge's denial and received an appeals counsel denial on January 1, 2015. So now here we are, three years later, you filed in federal court on January 1, 2015, based on your January 1, 2012 application that was denied by a judge uh, back in 2014. You still with me? Yeah, I know it's a little confusing, but hang tight. It'll get a little bit better. All right, so we're going to continue using the examples. Let's look at what happens first. On your January 1, 2012 application, this is your old case. The case is in federal court. The case is only going to focus on January 1, 2014's ALJ denial, and they're only going to go for 2014 going backwards. The new one, January 15, January 1, 2015, that's the one in Social Security. The case is only focusing on the period after the ALJ denial. This case is only focusing on it from 1 to 2014 to the present. So see how the two kind of mirror up? So you've got really two periods of disability. Remember now, this is just a rough one, so I don't want anybody to think this absolutely applies to everyone's scenario. But this is kind of the rough and ready of how it looks. So you've got a January 2012 application, a January 1, 2015 application, two periods of disability that they're looking at. Remember, under the law, as far as they're concerned, Social Security's concerned, once the judge denied you on January 1, 2014, that case was effectively over, except the fact that you kept uh, using your appeal rights. But until that decision is overturned, Social Security, the administration, uh, the Social Security administration still treats it as if the judge's decision was final as of that date going back. So, That case is in federal court, January 1, 2012. Of course, the appeals council, when they deny you on January 1, 2015, they basically say you can file a new application now. So you file a new application. So when you're trying to figure out, well, what's my period of disability? Can I go all the way back to, you know, a time period that was covered in my 2012 application? No, you are only going to be permitted to go back up to the day after the judge's decision, which is January 1, 2014. So it'll be January 2nd, 2014 to the present. And like I said, I'm gonna say this over and over again. Everybody's case is a little different, so there may be little nuances, but just to kind of give you a blanket overview, that's what we're looking at for right now. Now, I know this is gonna start blowing your mind, so get ready. There are, are about a good seven or more potential outcomes that can happen with regards to both of your cases. I know you're sitting going, oh my gosh, are you really about to do this to us now? Yes, I am, because I want you to have an appreciation of what's about to go down. The first scenario is fairly straightforward. That means you lose both claims. Now, here's where you have to understand what I mean by lose both claims. That means your old case in federal court, you have been denied, meaning the the United States District Court judge or the magistrate has affirmed the decision of the commissioner of Social Security, which is a nice way of saying, we think the government got it right. You're not disabled. And you either, one, appeal it to the uh, United States Courts of Appeals and you're not successful, or you just say, you know what, I've given up, and you lose that one. That means your old case is done, then you 
your new case, that one's done because you've applied, you know, gotten denied twice. You went before a judge, you got denied, and maybe you decided that you've had enough. So again, fairly straightforward. That's that's a done deal. Okay, so you lose the old claim while your new claim is pending. This is where your federal court gets denied by the United States District Court. You then decide if you can file an appeal to the United States Court of Appeal. If you don't, then your prior ALJ decision becomes final. So the only claim that you have going forward is the new claim. It's fairly straightforward. Just the United States District Court has made the decision that there's nothing more they can do with this case. Uh, the commissioner got it right, and you've decided not to uh, appeal it any further. Then for all intents and purposes, that old case is dead. You're now focusing on, the, unless some other legal issue that pops up, and this is why I say you need to get your representative if you're not sure, then for all purposes, that case is pretty much go, pretty much um, done. Now, when I say you win the old case while the no claim is pending, basically here's what I'm saying is, and you, the United States District Court makes a decision that's favorable to you. They, they either one decide the ALJ got it wrong or the commissioner got it wrong and they'll either pay it out outright or they'll remand it back for further development. Now, they rarely, and I mean federal courts rarely award benefits straight out. What they're basically doing is they'll send it back to the to the Social Security Administration to see if they can fix the problem. They'll say, hey, we think the judge didn't apply the law properly in this instance. I need you to basically fix this issue. Now, the USDC will usually give an indication of what's supposed to happen next. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, they'll either remand one of those two things. They'll either remand it or they'll pay it. So what they'll do is they'll say, hey, this is where we have some confusion in terms of what the judge has done. This is in a situation where they say we're going to remand it. So we're going to tell the Social Security Administration, we need you to address this issue in terms of, let's say, let's say there was a dis there was a uh, statement by your doctor that the ju that the judge did not discuss we need you to d we don't know if the judge had enough evidence to make a decision because that judge did not address that doctor's statement so they send it back to social security now once you get it back to social security you'll get a decision from the appeals council now the appeals council will typically do one of, of a few will do may do a few things but let's say they that the case has been remanded back what they normally will do is they'll say, okay, we know you filed a new application while your old one is pending. We're going to put the two together since the new one is currently pending and nothing's happening with it. If the United States District Court directs payment, the, the, the appeals council may direct payment of just the old case and let your new case proceed. Or they may tell them just pay the whole thing. You just don't know. It all depends. Now, are you confused yet? Stay with me because it's going to get a little bit weird. Now, these last three three or four slides should be really confusing. Now, let's say you lose the new claim while the old claim, claim is pending. Now, the key really is, what are you doing with that new claim while the old claim is pending? Meaning, let's say you go all the way up to a judge and you get denied by a judge. The new claim, case still can, proceeds as if you've never filed, so you now have to ask yourself, do you appeal it to the appeals council, or do you just say, ah, oh, the heck with it, I'll just wait until the judge, you know, in the federal court case makes a determination that's where it gets a little goofy most people i tell them listen if you've got an old claim pending continue appealing on your new new claim so if you go before your judge and you get denied don't take the attitude well i'll bump it i'll just wait until the united states because my old case was much stronger because that could cause all kind of additional confusion so what i would tell you is keep an active claim going and this is why you need to talk to an attorney because they'll tell you whether or not this is in your best interest keep an active claim going because if you keep appealing, the new claim and the old claim probably won't interact with each other until you get an outcome from the definitely from the old claim. Okay, now stay with me because this is where it still gets a little bit weird. Okay, so now things get a little interesting. You win your new claim while the old claim is pending. All right, it's party time. You think? So once you've gotten over the shock of knowing that you got approved on your old claim, you start thinking, well, what happens with your old claim? Well, while the old claim is pending, nothing really should happen. Meaning, your old remember the whole premise is when you're filing a new claim, it's treated as if you've never filed before. So, in the grander scheme of things, really nothing should happen while your old claim is pending. Meaning, you haven't gotten a decision on it. However, you need to know that if you win your old claim, after you know in the time period you won your new claim, things could get interesting. 
Here is where things blows your mind. You win your new claim. Congratulations. But then you win your old claim. You get notified that the federal court has decided in your favor. Now, this is where it gets weird that you need to know. This is where things get really interesting. And you say, well, why do you say it's interesting? Because, remember, your old claim was focused on the period of time from the judge's decision going backwards. Hopefully, your new claim will focus on the period of time after the judge's decision. So you've got two periods of disability. So once your old claim comes back, so let's say that they issue a favorable decision and they're sending it back to the judge. Two things could happen, typically. I'm not saying that this is every scenario, but this is what could happen. One, Social Security can just focus only on your old claim and not disturb your new claim. Trust, you really want that scenario. That's the one that that is the one that is the hotness because that means you continue to get money to monetary benefits on your new claim and you don't have to worry about what's going on with your old claim so guess what if you lose your old claim again no harm no foul you're still getting money on your new claim this is the thing that causes people a panic attack they reopen your new claim and what do you mean by reopen well they basically say you know what we think that these are two periods that are duplicate we want to give one clean decision so we're going to throw out your old claim, which was denied by the judge, and we're going to throw out your new claim that was approved, and we're going to put them all together and issue one big decision. So what is so there's a chance you could win on a new claim, have your case sent back to another hearing for the whole period, and possibly lose. And you say, well, what, what does that mean to me? Well, think about it like this. If the court determines a couple of things, if the court determines one, on a whole giant period of time that you were not disabled any time after the any time before the prior ALJ decision, then that new claim will probably stand. That means there shouldn't be a change. If they determine that you were disabled going all the way back to the old claim, now you're looking at more back pay. But they could also make the decision that you were never disabled for any of that period of time. So what does that mean? That means a good chance that you may have to reimburse the government money back for monies that you that you receive because the court made a determination that you were never disabled. So that's the nightmare, but that's the reality. And yes, it's like that. So here's another scenario. You win the old claim and then you find out while that transition period occurs, then you win the new claim. The reality is, is the same type of things may happen. Meaning by the time everything washes out, they may make the determination that, hey, well, wait a minute. It's still the same period of time, so they both need to be evaluated or they can only focus on on one, the old one. My Yes, I know, boom, it's blowing your mind. But this is where it gets a little wiggy when you have two claims floating at the same time. I cannot make this point abundantly clear because I know a lot of you... Uh, come to videos and check out YouTube and check out websites and blogs to give yourself information and so forth and to educate yourself. I applaud you for that. But if you're not sure what may happen in your scenario, get help because every case is a case by case basis. So this presentation doesn't apply to everyone. Everybody has some type of unique nuance to their circumstances. So this is the thing I tell people when they find themselves in this situation where they're not quite sure. If they've got a great situation or a potential nightmare, get some help. I don't care if you've got to contact Social Security directly to ask for some guidance. They're probably going to tell you that you need to get a representative. You can always hire an attorney or a non-attorney representative to give you some guidance and so forth like that. Most of your non-attorney reps are not going to be admitted in the federal court, so they can probably talk to you about what may happen when it comes back down. But in terms of what's happening in federal court, you're probably going to need to find a representative who is admitted to that court or more importantly, does federal court work to give you a breakdown as to what to expect. People don't freak. The reality is, is that this that when these things go down, they can be you're right. They can be a potential nightmare. Make sure that you get a complete understanding of the ramifications of having two claims, one in federal court and one at the administrative level, so that you can make an informed decision about what is best for your circumstances.